My name is Pellicent Moon and welcome back to Hermitcraft Season 9, Episode 10. In between last episode and this one where we ended off at the shopping district, so much has already changed and there's already a whole bunch of new shops that have popped up. We got False's Beans. I don't think that was there before and that certainly wasn't. We have Beatubs' moss shop over there, which I would actually love to investigate and look at because he always does such magnificent builds, for one. We have Grian's Entity, which has appeared in the shopping district and honestly kind of looks like some creepy insect or a spider. It's slightly disturbing. We have a green shop, by the looks of it. Really cool, interesting tower here. And well, yeah, that, that's pretty much all the new stuff in the shopping district so far, but things are definitely happening and happening and progressing on the server. Like I said as well, I, I need to check this shop out. Look at this shop. This is absolutely gorgeous. Like everyone is doing fantastic things, but this moth shop, like, <laughs> Look at this, he's building with leaves. It's completely covered in moss. Like just beat up his choice of palette in his shops are fantastic. This is like a little fruit stall almost. I mean, it's like a moss stall. See, look at this, he's using the angles to create like this different shape that we're not usually used to. And it looks fantastic. I absolutely love this. And I need to look inside it. I don't really, really need moss because you know, I've got my own moss farm, but you know, I need to, yeah. Yep, I need to see this. I'm sorry, beat ups. I'm gonna be fanning over this building for a hot minute because this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. He's even using glazed terracotta in here. What is he even selling this for? One stack for a diamond. This is kind of expensive, I'm not gonna lie. For someone who has a moss farm, that's pretty easy to make. A little, a little expensive, but you know. <laughs> My gosh, this is, this is gorgeous. Is there another level up back here? Yes, we have more stairs. What's up here? Aha! Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, well, his farm looks a little, little bigger than mine. My wordy woo. I feel like I'm in like the, the staff area right now, but his farm is definitely a lot bigger. I'm presuming this one can completely self-sustain itself in bone meal, unlike mine, and looks like it produces a lot more, a lot quicker. So I presume his shop is pretty much always going to be stocked at this point, but Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Beatubs, fantastic work once again. Absolutely gorgeous. I love it. You know, last episode, we, of course, we established our shop presence on the server with Twinkly Trash, but I didn't actually finish it to the point of opening. You know, there's no prices on the stock, none of that. So we're actually going to kick into this episode today by jumping right on it. We need to get this thing open and we need to start selling. I need to make diamonds. First things first though, we actually need to get dressed for the occasion. And I have a trusty wardrobe right here awaiting with my attire. There we go, perfectly dressed for the tasks at hand that we have to complete today. I'm going to say a huge, huge thank you to Liv, my fantastic skin artist, for creating some brand new trashy attire for me. I've got my green little overalls. I got my safety boots on the bottom. I've got my hard hat from that extra cranium protection from falling trash because who knows what's going to happen in my kind of shop. You know, I'm already down a few brain cells and I... I can't lose more of them. <laughs> so I love it so much. Check out the back as well. I've got my hair down, although that maybe that doesn't really follow the safety guidelines usually in, in workplaces, but it's fine. <laughs> and of course I have a lovely dark gray checkered shirt to go underneath my overalls and I absolutely love it. So I'll be leaving a link down in the description to Liv's Twitter for anyone who is actually interested to check out more of their work. So thank you so much Liv. You always do such a fantastic job and I appreciate it so much. Now it's time to get back to business. You know, I've been reading a few comments in the last episode and we have quite a few improvement suggestions for our shop that I shall be taking on board today. The first thing is relating to this trash bag right here. And there are a lot of comments, you know, that weren't too happy with the pickle. And honestly, neither was I. Now we had a few people mention that we could potentially use some dead coral to replace that as the little kind of tie on top of the bag. And I tried it out and you know what? I think it works out really well. So we're gonna just stick these on top. That'll eventually turn gray because it has no access to water. There it goes. And it does look a lot better than the pickle. Now, of course, you know, the, the, the tie at the top is a lot bigger than you would otherwise see in real life, but it certainly does a better job of it. So I like that suggestion. Thanks guys. We'll change a few of the ones inside as well to get that scene really set inside. 
We also had quite a few comments mention a few different solutions for our pin juice problem. You know how I pressed the pressure plates in the last episode and they, you know, flicked themselves up to the ceiling and made a little stinky ceiling? Well, uh, I, there was one particular suggestion that I thought was actually quite smart that a few people were mentioning, and that is simply to kind of move these down a block and then put a slab above them so the potions hit the slab, which theoretically means, you know, you'll get the smell on the floor, technically. So I want to really try that out and see if it's going to work for us. So we need to face the dispensers up, and I'm going to stick two slabs on top of that. Now, I hope this works. I believe the pressure plate is still going to work through the slabs. Yep, I can still hear the dispensers just fine. And then we're going to try and put a potion in here and see if it actually does hit the slab instead of going through to the roof. Let's see. And there we go, it works! It actually looks kind of cool. Hold on, let me put this one down. Yeah, check it out. You walk inside and suddenly you've got all these stinky particles on the floor. Now, it doesn't look like it affects the player, but to be honest, that's actually not really a bad thing because... I don't really mind if the player doesn't have the effect on them at the time, but they will see the stinky floor and I think that's still a cool effect nonetheless. We did also have a few comments mentioning they're going to trigger it every time they go in and out of the building and I kind of expect that, but I guess at this point in time this kind of works. We can have an entry and an exit door potentially in the future if I feel it's that much of an issue, but for now I love that suggestion to at least get the, the stinkiness on the floor going. <laughs> it's a very stinky shop. I'm not going to fill these up with potions just yet though because I'm bound to be walking in and out of this shop quite a bit today while I'm restocking it. So we're just going to leave these off towards the side for now until we're ready to, you know, fully open this shop officially. Oh, one other thing to mention before I hop out of the store right here is we had a few comments also concerned that they wouldn't actually see the name on the potions as bin juice. Of course, they certainly went with it below the ground but uh essentially a different concept that i had in mind that i didn't explain in the last episode is that i'll be putting a whole bunch of these potions kind of just scattered around in amongst all the different stock that i have so they can hover over them and then <laughs> you know see them in there is just a bit of bit of trash could, could be a bit of fun that way so they'll, they'll kind of figure out what the potions are from that anyway though potions aside there was one other suggestion that I had that was from an overwhelming amount of people in the comments. And that was suggesting that we need bin chickens. Yes, you, you heard it right, bin chickens. <laughs> For those who may not exactly be aware of what those are, typically in Australia we have a type of long-beaked black and white bird called an ibis, who on a very common occasion you'll, you know, see pestering the bins around the local neighbourhood. I'm not sure how many or if any other countries, you know, have that occurrence, but we sure do here, and adding that to the shop is a fantastic idea. I love it. I was thinking about ways I could implement it, and I have two ideas that I could do. And I'm gonna do both, because I liked both of them. The first method is literally grabbing a bunch of chickens, getting some name tags, and then naming them as pin chickens, and leaving them to roam around in my shop as they typically would do in real life. One problem that I can already see though is the fact that we don't really have any chickens uh, in the spawn area. I don't know anybody that has a farm either, so that's gonna be a problem that future me has to figure out. Now, the second method is to literally build an organic ibis or bin chicken outside of my shop to stand tall and stand proud just as false has done with uh, her wasp over there. What I'm thinking is I could have a pretty cool ibis just standing on the corner of my shop here. Not only am I going to be adding the bin chicken outside though, I'm going to be improving my shop a little bit because you know look at look at the dirt pile at the front. It's so plain, it's so boring. I was originally going to put a garden there but I have a better idea. I still plan on adding a garden just a little bit smaller because the rest of the space I actually want to use that to make a garbage truck. You know we have a whole shop you know, based on garbage. I now have clothes based on garbage. We need some kind of transport based on garbage. <laughs> I don't usually build vehicles but I think a garbage truck is definitely going to set the scene on our little zone here. So let's waste! <laughs> waste. <laughs> okay, sorry, that was bad. <laughs> Let's waste no more time and just get building. Let's go!
You know what? It turns out the chickens weren't too far away from my shop after all because there were some right behind in the dark oak forests. That made it so much easier and this is my final chicken that I need to add to my store. I've decided that yeah, three three kind of does the job. I reckon we don't need too many in here. And uh, okay, now I've got to get this guy through the door. Come on, little buddy. Come in. Come meet your lovely chicken family, bin chicken family that I've attached here via a fence post. Uh, I'm going to give you a different fence post though. Let me have a look. Let's see. I reckon, little buddy, that we can probably just chuck you underneath here where people won't really see that fence post. And yes, I do have to put them on leads because otherwise they're just going to walk on these and leave. <laughs> so I needed to make sure they were tethered at least in some way. And the last thing I need is just uh, just some name tags. And I know just the villager for that. Grab myself a few little emeralds here and pop down to one of my three little lovely library villages. I think Goop here. Goop is the one with the name tags. Unfortunately, I haven't zombified this guy. So uh, they're kind of expensive, but you know, I've only got three chickens anyway, and now I've got four name tags. So it's fine. Plenty. Now, the only thing is I need an anvil and uh, I actually don't have one in here, but I know exactly where to find an anvil. And that is on my brand new garbage truck yeah I've, I've got i've got a few anvils on my new truck <laughs> look at this thing it's it's not quite as like fantastically detailed as some other vehicles i've seen some hermits make um but you know what i'm proud of it for me that doesn't typically make a vehicle i think this truck came out pretty well and you know i've got a couple of anvils attached to the side here and i can rename my name tags to a bin chicken and be absolutely fabulous there we go but yes check out my garbage truck isn't it glorious? I got some lovely little like uh, some some mud pads out the back as the uh, birds trap doors. We got the the tail lights as well. We got the yellow labeling on the side to signify my company per se. On the front of the truck, we have honey blocks as headlights. We got a loom in the middle for like the grate or the grill. You know, we've got the this little thing off to the side of those like bin lifter things or whatever it is on the trucks. I don't know. I found inspiration on Google Images from a real one. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not a garbage truck expert, but you know, I, I think it came out pretty well. What do you guys think of my, my little garbage truck right here? Yeah, I think it fits me just well. I guess while we're down here though, I can show you guys some of the improvements that I made in my time lapse to this area. So as you can see already, I have expanded out the front a little bit or dug into it and put this truck down as like a little pathway or a road leading out from it that then curves up and goes into the stairway. We're not going to question how on earth that truck is supposed to get in or out because that's not that's not important. All right. It's, it's not important. I've got to think about it. <laughs> we got a lovely little garden off to the left hand side here with some beautiful mushrooms growing off the walls and some hanging roots off the bottom because it's a little bit of a fungus type location. We got some little spruce trees growing. We got some dead bushes happening. We got some more garbage bags going on. And oh, by the way, there was also another suggestion in the previous episode's comments to use candles on top of them. I think I do prefer the, co the uh, brain coral or the coral in general on top of the bags, but the candles are pretty cute variation. So I like that. Thanks guys. Add a little bit of extra moss to the walls as well to kind of just weather it down a little bit. And I've added this kind of like beachy front area to kind of match with uh, what we've got going on over the river there as well. And off to the right hand side, I built like a little bit of a fence. So if someone wants to build next to me, that is possible. And just some, you know, little extra garbage bags and some dirt and, and whatnot. And let me fly out for a hot minute and you will see the Ibis Organic. There we go. So it's not it's not super huge. It's just there to kind of accompany my my structure and my shop. And I think it looks gorgeous. And if we look at it from a different angle here, you will see. Hold on. That he's also got a little bit of a head tilt as well. He's not perfectly symmetrical. He's kind of like leaning a little bit more into my shop. And I don't know, I find it kind of cute that he's got this little tiny lean. <laughs> it's a little bit more dynamic than just, you know, straight on diagonal. So I think he's super cute. He's, he's you know, he's my little bin chicken. And he's got his, his leg raised too. I don't know. He's my little bin chicken. He's cute. So that is what an Australian ibis uh, typically looks like. Oh, and I also added a little bit of like bin gunk or bin juice even coming out of the dumpster itself. I don't know. It's just a little bit of an extra detail that really creates or sets in the environment or story that I'm trying to tell. And then, you know, it kind of drips down onto the ground here with some slime puddles. And I kind of used the dripstone block. We got mushroom stem and some snow as like piles of garbage around it as well. Like it's all piled up at the bottom and uh, maybe it's moldy. I don't know. Kind of depends what you guys think about it. Anyway. Let's go name our chickens, because that's all the updates that I have to tell you guys. Everything else is pretty much the same. Hello, my little sweet chickens. I got you lovely name tags. Bin chicken number one. 
you little sweetie. We got bin chicken number two. And we got bin chicken number three. I almost feel like I need to get another bin chicken because I have one name tag. But hey, maybe you know, this is just in case something happens. Actually, you know what? I've got nine eggs. I have nine eggs. Can we get a baby chicken? Oh no, we've got two baby chickens. Oh no, that's a problem. I've only got one name tag. Well, one one isn't going to have a name. All right, boink. <laughs> You've got bin chicken number four and... The, the last one is is slightly nameless. Um, it, it's fine. It's fine. You're you're going on here. Okay. You're cute. I love you. Oh, you're leaving. Okay, I'm leaving too. Right, we got some things to do. That is the shop wrapped up for now. Uh, I do need to get some stock going on, but we'll probably have to mess with that in the next episode because there are more matters that we need to attend to right now that are slightly a little bit more urgent. The, uh, the pillar competition thing going on. Things have gotten even crazier since the last episode. Like, look at this. There is a diamond anvil crushing a diamond block tower. We got some sort of portal thing. We have potentially looks like this pillar is shooting through that portal and oh, there's the other one. Okay. And it's coming out the other side and hitting this diamond tower. This looks like Hypno's tower right here as well. So we've got more competition coming in. This tower has continued above the explosion. Looks like it's fixed itself. And then over here, you've got Doc's tower that's decided to uh, come over to my tower and block my path going down. Someone has noticed that my tower is here. And uh, unfortunately, I did not escape the gaze for too long. Oh, there's signs up here. Hold on. What's this? What does this say? What does this say? Hit, hit, hit. Guess mine is in the way. Oops, didn't see your pillar there. Oh, you, you cheeky goat. All right, um, I don't know what, what do I do now? <laughs> I'm actually at a block. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me just get my brain to, to think about what on earth I want to do for a moment here because he's put, a, he's put a stop to my path. Um, all right, thinking time intensifies. After thinking for a little bit, I have come to realize that Doc's tower, you know, has gone in several different directions since it's been started. And this particular one has these wooden beams as supports, you know, to stop it from falling down. Because gravity in Minecraft, right? That makes sense. But in this one, it's completely horizontal and there is no supports whatsoever. So I wouldn't be surprised if a little bit of gravity played a part in this uh, diamond pillar war here. As far as I'm concerned, his pillar can't stop mine because it's it's about to just fall down from lack of stability. Maybe if I jump on it a few times, it might just crumble and fall down. You know, because I'm I'm heavy and everything like that, right? It's going to make a, a whole pillar fall down. Just Just jump on it a little bit. Just jump on it a little bit. Something might happen. Unfortunately, the gravity of Doc's pillar isn't quite the same as the gravity of my pillar because that just snapped right off. Look at that thing. It's just, it, it's fallen. It's fallen down. I've tried to save his pillar a little bit. You know, be kind despite him blocking me with some, some balloons and a little bit of an extra spruce support there. But uh, yeah, that, that is a pillar that's just waiting to crumble even further. Doc, you gotta be careful, mate. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Now that uh, Doc's pillar has <clears throat> conveniently <laughs> fallen down, though, it looks like our pillar is now free to continue downwards. And guess what? I have some more deep slate diamond ore to add. Yes, that's right. I've been doing a little bit more mining, uh, and I can expand a mine a bit further now. I'm really hoping this at least kind of shows at least some kind of difference in my pillar now, because I I still feel like my pillar is way too short. Up, 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 up. Oh, I uh, kind of forgot to mention I did leave Doc a couple of signs here as well. Uh, well, Doc, I took one step on this and it just snapped. Be careful of gravity. And I've added balloons to help. Not sure how long they'll last, you know, because as far as I'm concerned, that's just helium in there. They're easily, easily going to deflate soon. You better get this checked out sooner rather than later, Doc, because this, this is a bit dangerous. Anyway... I've added some more diamond ore to my pillar, and uh, that stack and al well, almost two stacks of deep slate diamond ore really didn't get us very far, did it? Because, yeah, 
Doc's, Doc's pillar is still right here and mine's only expanded to there. I don't think I have enough deep slate diamond ore, guys. I think it's time to ramp things up a bit. In the last season of Hermitcraft, some of you guys may or may not remember that uh, I mined with a wither down at the stone level to try and make a big tunnel. And this time around, I'm thinking of doing the same thing, but down in deep slate. And personally, I'm really curious if mining with the wither down at deep slate level is going to produce quite a lot more diamonds than just mining strip mines normally. However, I'm a little bit down of three wither skulls, so that's something that I actually need to get right now. And once I get the wither skulls, I'll explain how all of this is gonna work. Into the nether we go. Hello. Oh. Ow. No skull. Ooh. Ooh. Achievement. Nice. Ooh. Number two. Ooh. Number three. Well, okay. I think it's time for me to go back home again before I die. Now all we need to do is head down to our mines and I'm going to use my mega base mines for this one because this one is much less mined out than the starter base area. And then we're going to dig a very, very long strip mine until we're ready to place the wither down. Make sure to light up behind you as well because otherwise you'll get mob spawning when you're going to be going backwards because you'll be fighting the wither. So you, you do not want a creeper behind you while you're trying to deal with the wither in front of you. Around one full stack of spaced out torches later and one huge corridor, we're ready to place the wither down. Now, the next thing we gotta do is we just gotta make a big box to spawn the wither in. Now, I could also be spawning chickens, which will get us wither roses once the wither spawns, but I don't really have a lot of eggs and I don't really have any need for wither roses right now. So we're just gonna do it a pretty standard way at the moment. Oh, look, diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Speaking of, I did get 18 while just mining the, the giant tunnel that we did there. So let's let's see how many we've got here. Just just the one? I mean, that was that was pretty lucky to be honest, regardless. <laughs> okay. But yes, we have our whole dog now. Let's chuck in the wither and then we'll put the heads on in just a second. Let me kind of explain what on earth I'm doing here and why this is gonna help in the pillar competition. So what I'm gonna do with the wither is I'm gonna get it to mine me a three wide and four tall tunnel. By doing that, Hopefully, I'm going to expose a whole bunch of diamond deep slate ore that I can then mine and then use in the pillar competition. I'm not sure exactly how effective this is going to be in terms of how much it's going to expose, but I kind of just wanted to give it a try anyway and see if it's a little bit more fruitful than just, you know, mining the giant strip mine tunnel by itself. So let me show you guys exactly how that's going to work. We're going to spawn in our lovely wither here, <laughs> you know, stand far enough back that we don't get hit by the explosion. There we go, Mr. Wither. There we go, beautiful. We're gonna take it down to half health. So now that it's on its second stage here, you'll notice it's kind of sticking around closer to the ground. And that means it's not going to hover up into any holes that we have in the ceiling, if there happens to be one or a cave. And it's just going to, oh, there's a diamond there. And it's just going to smash blocks and create a three by four tunnel. And hopefully expose a whole bunch of diamond Deep slate ore. Now I do want to kind of go back and get those diamonds. Unfortunately, we are going to have some, you know, just like those ones there that are just going to break in the wither's path, but hopefully we're going to expose a whole bunch towards the sides of the tunnel itself. And then we go back afterwards and mine them all up. Uh, I should probably focus on not dying right now, though I'm kind of distracted in the commentary. <laughs> um, am I about to die right now? I think I'm about to die right now. Oh gosh. Oh, oh, don't die, please. Heal, heal, heal. Oh, oh, I was way too distracted in the commentary right there. It, it, it's a little dangerous, as you can see, but uh, it can be worth it. <laughs> it can be worth it, trust me. Oh boy, that was close. I wanna go back and get those diamonds. I see you, I see you, my little diamonds. Yoink, thank you. Just stealing those. I know that, oh, there is some deep slate diamond ore there as well that we will end up coming back to get unless he's just blown them up. Uh, we'll find out later. Uh-oh. We're at the end of our life cycle. Yeah, <laughs> that's unfortunate. <laughs> one death in the count. Oh no, we're back here as well. I'm just gonna steal one of Gem's cows here and milk it because it's probably a good idea to bring one of these back with us. I'm coming for you, Wither. Mm -hmm. There's all my stuff. See, not too bad. Easy to recover. Not a problem. And it looks like he's still in his other phase as well, so that's all right. Gonna put on my gear now so I won't die again. Jeez. <laughs> hey, buddy boy. I'm back, back again. Now the downside to mining at deep slate level is definitely the lava. When we come back through this tunnel, that is gonna be a pain to get rid of that. All right, we're coming to the end of our tunnel here. It's getting 
a little bit dicey, so just make sure we kill it before we get to the end, because otherwise we'll be trapped and most likely we'll die. But as it is, I've left the wither at about one or two hits, so it should be able to kill it pretty quickly once we are at the end here. And ready? Let's do it! And bam and bam! There we go, that was actually quite perfect to be honest. Well now that the wither is killed we have this beautiful 3x4 tunnel that it's created and hopefully a whole bunch of diamond deep slate ore has been exposed for us to mine. I'm very excited to see how much we get. How much deep slate diamond ore do you guys think we'll get? Let me know down in the comments below and uh, see how many of you guys got close to it. Let's also count the 19 that we got from mining the strip mine as well, because I think that'll be super interesting. It's all part of the process. It counts. Not to mention as well, in this whole process, you know, we also got another star out of it. Um, does that mean we don't have to sing to tango anymore for a beacon? <laughs> something that we, uh, it's just kind of just a bonus at this point. Not really something I came down here to specifically get. But nice! Oh, my dude's brought back a diamond for me! Thanks, buddy! Thanks for picking that up. Ooh, here we go. Here's the jackpot. You love to see that. Oh, oh, two punches right here. Ooh, it uncovered a mob grinder! But it doesn't have any chests in it. <laughs> I was kind of I was kind of hoping for some chests to maybe get another other side disc, but uh... Oh, well, we got a mob grinder! That's very nice. It's been uncovering a few caves in its journey, so we can definitely explore those. And you know what? There might be some more diamond ore in these these places. But uh, that's that's very cool. I like that. Oh, another bunch right here. Ooh, pretty. And unfortunately, it looks like we are coming to the end of the tunnel. Honestly, this didn't kind of give as many diamond ores as I was hoping. We do have almost a full stack of deep slate diamond ore plus an extra 12 diamonds because they broke in the wither's path so technically if none of these diamonds broke in the wither we might have more or less close to 70 or 80 deep slate diamonds so i mean it's pretty neat i don't know if it was worth it if it's worth the time to do something like that but i mean if you want to mine a really long tunnel anyway maybe you've, you you're going underground as one of your friends bases and you want a tunnel like this that's super quick to mine compared to normal then this is the way to go when you get some bonus diamonds while you're at it but uh you know what at least that is another full stack to add to our diamond ore pillar as much as i'm not sure if that whole thing is worth doing comparative to just normal strip mining I think it was at least quite interesting to know the results, you know, <laughs> between mining with a wither and just mining with your pickaxe. Well, it certainly did uncover a gigantic cave though. Look at this place. Is that, wait, is that more diamonds up there? Or is that more, is that some, it is more diamonds. You know what, if, even though the, uh, the tunnel may not have had the full stack of diamonds, it might be making up for it in the caves that it uncovered. Thank you. All right. I need to go back home. We're gonna continue back home and go put these on our pillar. I'll come back to the caves later. All right, let's see how far that got us. Oh, you know what? That's actually pretty good because our pillar was pretty much up there before and today we've added pretty much that a whole segment. I reckon that's not too bad. I definitely have to do a lot more work here, but uh, it's getting there. I do have to wonder how Doc is going to come back from uh, the gravity of the situation of his pillar. <laughs> gravity. You know, now that we've sufficiently added to our pillar today, it's actually time to go do more work in the mega base area. Ah, oh, home sweet home. And it looks like Jim's made some progress on her base too. She's got a whole outline going on and a couple towers. Let's go, Jim. <laughs> Even Impulse has made extra progress here as well. He's got some statues going on out the front. And the reason that I've come back here today to make some more progress is because of this. You guys might remember that a couple episodes or so back, I talked about a bridge to connect Impulse and I's base. Now that's something I'm gonna do today, and I think I've come up with a pretty good design for it that should be a lot of fun to make and really bring these two together. Now, because our styles are so widely different, I've decided to go a bit more of a palette route rather than a style route to link our bases together. And I have deep slate and acacia planks in mind, which is present in both of our builds. So it should go pretty well together. It's time to stop explaining it though, and just get building. I guess we're queuing time-lapse number two for today. <laughs> Let's go. Just the final touches, boop, boop, and boop. And there we go. We have 
a complete bridge between impulse and eyes base. Check this thing out, guys. Honestly, it's definitely a very different design than what I was anticipating originally, but I quite like how it stands out. It's it's kind of a little bit of also of a mix of like a city vibe, which is what I was saying. I kind of wanted part of my actual, you know, the structures on my terrain to be like. And then you've kind of got a little bit more of this like raw, unrefined, <laughs> lumpy stoneness that uh, kind of comes from Impulse's theme in a way. It's not so much Impulse's theme exactly, but you know, at least it incorporates the palette and I quite like it. What do you guys think to my bridge? Let's do a little bit of a flyover and show you guys this thing properly from the air. There we go. You can already see it here, bridging the gap between both of our bases. I think it's definitely, once I get more structures into mine, I think it's definitely going to match a little bit more as well. Now I know we're missing probably some of the gray that would otherwise be on Impulse's base to really draw it in, but I think it kind of works at the moment, at least, you know, with the acacia wood and the deep slate going on. I'm, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> I am very happy with it. And I've also got a bit of, you know, crumbliness at the bottom and some lush green plants for a little bit of that extra contrast as well. And from Impulse's base, the perspective of walking across the bridge is just like this. It's it's quite pleasant to be honest. It's, it is making you feel like you're about to go into a city, which is exactly what my base is going to depict later on in the future. Now, I haven't dug any sorts of tunnel or anything just yet. It kind of just ends here, but it's definitely kind of starting to pave the route for the direction that I would love to go. Anyway, though, guys, now that the bridge is laid down and complete, that is actually going to be it for the episode today. We've done quite a lot. You know, we, we've done the bridge. We've made improvements to our shop and, uh, you know, it's looking absolutely fantastic. I know the stock isn't quite there yet and it's not open but hopefully by the next episode we'll get that fresh and open to get some beautiful sales and we've also made a little bit of a contribution to the diamond or pillar challenge i think we're still a little bit behind on that but i'm probably going to do even more mining between episodes to try and get even more ores to so hopefully bring it back up to where it should be but for now I, th I think we've definitely made some good progress in that and of course my fancy attire i'm absolutely loving it i'm gonna i'm gonna chill out in my overalls <laughs> So thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you all enjoyed the episode. I tried to fly off and I can't because I don't have my lights on. But I hope you guys all enjoyed the episode. I hope you have a lovely day. And I'll catch you all in the next one. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. They bring people together. That's a very nice bridge.